Welcome back. In this, our last week, we are going to review logic programming. In particular, we are going to review programming with Prolog. Prolog is the language that we are going to be using to apply logic programming. Let's start. Logic programming focus on what is needed instead of how to implement that. In logic programming, the programmer describe the problem and basically let the computer to find a solution. We trust in the environment an interpreter that we're going to be using to find a solution that meet the requirement that we specify. In the logic programming paradigm, we use a variation of predicate logic syntax that is similar to natural language. Predicate logic basically eliminates unnecessary words from sentences and then transforms the sentence by placing first the relationship that we're going to call the predicate of the sentence. And then, inside parentheses, is going to group the items, objects, or elements that are involved in that relationship. Let me show you some examples. The first column in this table is showing you some sentence in English. In the second column, you can see the equivalent of that sentence, but in predicate logic. In the first line, a car is fast. That is the way that you write this idea using natural language. If you think about it, the two ideas that are important there, the car, that is the object, and the predicate, fast. So in predicate logic, you can express this like fast, the predicate, and inside parentheses, car, because that is the object that is involved in this relationship. In the second line, another expression in English, a rose is red. The two ideas that are important there is rose, the object, and red, the predicate. In predicate logic, you put first the predicate, red, and inside parentheses, the object, rose. Those two are simple sentence. We are going to call simple sentence, like those two rows, facts. So those two are facts. In the next two lines, we have a different type of sentence. In the next two lines, we have what we call rules. They are sentence connected by a condition an if statement. That if statement is going to be represented by colon dash in the predicate logic. So for instance, B likes the car if the car is fast. We have two parts in this sentence and those two parts are connected by the if condition. In the first part of the statement, the predicate is likes. And the objects involved in that relationship, likes, are Bill and the car. So there is a relationship between Bill and the car, and that relationship is likes. So Bill likes the car. However, that is conditioned to a different fact. The car is fast. In this part, the predicate is fast, and the object that is involved in that sentence is car. So the representation of that is fast, and in parentheses, the object. In this case, only one object, car. Those two sentences are connected by the if statement, and they form a rule. Bill like the car if the car is fast. In a similar way, in the other sentence, we have two parts. The first one, humidity is high, the predicate is high, and the object involved in that predicate is humidity. So high, parentheses, the object, humidity. In the second part, we only have its rain. And there, we have a predicate, rains, but we do not have an object, so it's just a predicate without objects. 
As you notice in the sentence, we have the verb, but we do not have a complement in the sentence. So it makes sense that we only have the predicate, but no objects involved. And those two sentences, humidity is high, it's rain, they are connected by a condition statement, if. And you can notice what happened with those two if that you can see in blue. They are represented by this colon dash. These two lines are called rules in predicate logic. And you are going to identify them because they are going to have this colon dash that represent the word if in natural language. In natural language, you can express the same relationship between different objects. For instance, you can state that Jane is the mother of Elaine. And also you can state that Jane is the mother of Mike. So you have an object that have the same relationship with other two. Or you can express that David is the father of Jesse and Jesse is the father of Obed. So you have an object that have two childs and you have an object that have a son which is also the father of another object. Those sentences in natural language can be expressed in predicate logic as follows. Similar idea that before, you have two relationships. We can call it mother of and father of. And then you express in parentheses the objects that are involved. So Jane is involved in two lines as the first object. And the second object is Elaine in the first line and Mike in the second one. Regarding father of, as you notice, Jesse in the first line represent the son, but in the second line represent the father. So you have this transition, David father of Jesse, and then Jesse father of Bed. Those four are four different lines, and each of those is a fact. Finally, in the last line, we have a rule. And we know that this is a rule because we have this if condition in the natural language sentence. And you can notice the colon dash in the predicate logic. In the first part, as usual, we have the predicate, grandmother of, and the objects involved are X and C. Then, in the second part, we are using the relationship mother of and father of that we defined before to explain what is the meaning of grandmother of. As you notice, we have twice in the natural language the expression mother of and we have one time the expression father of. Therefore, in the predicate logic, we have the predicate mother of twice and father of one. Something that is new, as you can notice in red, are the comma and the semicolon. The comma is going to mean and, and the semicolon is or. In the predicate logic, comma is and, and semicolon is or. So x is grandmother of c if x is the mother of y and y is the mother of c or y is the father of c. The syntax is a little bit different, but when you read the natural language expression or the predicate logic, they are the same. An additional note in this example that you need to remember, uppercase strings represent variables. Lowercase represent names. So, so when you use Jane, Elaine, Mike, Carl, Rose, all of those, because they are lowercase, they represent a particular name, a particular object. However, in this last example, we are using X, C, and Y 
in uppercase that represent variables. So it's a space that can be used for more than one object or for more than one item and the expression will be true. So we have facts representing knowledge that we have equivalent to sentences in natural language in which we put the predicate first and the objects or items inside parentheses separated by commas. We have the comma that represent and and connect different facts. We have the semicolon that represent or and also connect different facts. So here we have bill like cards and bill like bike. Or in the second line, bill travels using a car or bill travels using a bike. Notice that at the same time you can like two different objects like bill, like the car and the bike at the same time. However, when we apply the relationship travel, we travel by a car or we travel using a bike, but we cannot do both at the same time. Therefore, we use OR instead of AND. We use facts to create rules. The rules help us to infer information from the given facts. You are going to identify the rules because the colon and the dash that represent this IF statement. So in this example, we are defining that there is a relationship between Bill and Joe because Bill is father of Joe and we establish this rule that the relationship son exists between Joe and Bill because we know that the relationship father exists between Bill and Joe. The programming language that we are going to use to work with logic programming is going to be Prolog. The name of Prolog means programming logic and this language uses an interpreter. This interpreter implements a deductive database. So what is going to happen is that we are going to provide a set of statements as rules and facts and the deduction system of the database is going to allow us to make queries in the database. And those queries are going to be called goals. So three key elements programming with Prolog are going to be facts, rules, and queries. And remember, in Prolog, variables are going to have uppercase letters and constants or names are going to be lowercase. As usual, to start working with the new language that we are going to learn, we need a compiler or an interpreter. In this case, we need an interpreter. As I mentioned before, Prolog uses an interpreter. So your first assignment is to install an interpreter for Prolog. I could recommend you this one. You can download the interpreter from this URL. This one works in Windows, Mac and Linux. I am sure that you can find another options. There are several. This is only one of them. As usual, I want to share with you that there is an option for an online interpreter. So you do not need to install anything in your computer. You can just go to this URL. And in this web page, 
you can have access to an interpreter for Prolog that is exactly the same that the one that I am recommending you to download. You can identify the same logo in the background. So let me show you the environment to work with Prolog. I'm gonna use the online version. Here in the online, the first thing that you need to do is to establish that you want to create a new program, an empty program. So I can start with a click here, create a program. And your environment is going to be three different sections. In the first section here, we are able to input data to the deductive database. So here, you are going to be able to define facts and rules. So facts and rules go here. After you provide the data to the database, then you can do queries. Your queries are going to be here. Finally, you can run your queries. When you run your queries, you click this bottom here, run, and you are gonna show the result here in this space. So step number one, input data, facts and rules. Step number two, queries, run the query. Step number three, you get results. For instance, we can define a fact. The exam is going to be easy. We can define that used with the predicate. And if I do not want to add the objects that participate in that predicate, in that relationship, the only thing that I need is the name for the predicate. Everything in lowercase and at the end, I need to put a dot. Dot represent the end of this statement. And as you notice, the text is gonna change the color. That red color indicate that that one is the name of a predicate. After that, my database have one line, one fact. Then I can go here and make a query. My query could be as simple as asking exam easy. As you notice, it's exactly the same that I put before in the database. When I run this query, my result is going to be true. The meaning of this is that I give information to Prolog. The information that I provide was that the exam is going to be easy. I provide that with one predicate, exam easy. Then when I ask with this query, if the exam is going to be easy, 
my answer is yes, true. Exam easy is true. I can provide more information like Arizona hot, Arizona hot, when I run this query, again, my result is true. Now, I can define facts that have objects. For instance, I can define it, and that is going to be a relationship between Fred and Orange. So Fred eats Orange. Dot. Also, I can define H, and I can use again the object Fred, and I can use another object that is going to be a number, and I define this relationship H between Fred and 32. So Fred H 32 dot. Now with that information in my database, I can ask new queries. For instance, I can ask exactly the same thing that I put in the line 3 of the database. Eat, Fred, and Orange. If I run this query, as expected, the result is going to be true. Fred eat orange. Now, what about a small change here? I'm going to run the query eat Fred, but now with apples instead of orange. And the result is going to be false. Because that relationship do not exist in the database. In a similar way, I can change Fred for Jane, and I can ask if Jane eats apples. If I run the query, I'm going to get false, because that relationship is not defined. I can also use the relationship age in a similar way. So I can ask for Fred and I can ask if the age of Fred is 20 and the result is going to be false because I defined before that the age of Fred is 32. So everything that you define in the database, every fact that you provide, is going to return true when you use the same sentence in the query section. But anything that is not defined in the database is going to return a false value. Let's include more data in the database. We can add new objects for the relationship 
it like Fred also eats apples. Like Mike eat orange. And maybe also Jane eat orange. And we can add more data to the relationship H also. So H, Jane, 3, 2, or H, Mike, 20. With this data, we can ask more complex questions. We can write a query like the following. We can ask about the relationship it. We can ask about Fred. And if we put a value here, the result that we are going to get is true or false as before, depending on whether or not that fact is the final. Right? However, if we put here a variable, and variables are in upper case, the result is going to be different. This x here is not an object. I am not defining that Fred eats x because that x is in upper case. It is a variable. Variables store data. So when I run this query, my result is going to be that x can be equal to orange. So the value orange make this expression true. If I click here in next, Prolog is going to tell me that another value that make this expression true is x equal apples. Therefore, my question about Fred eats is something like, what does Fred eat? And the answer are orange and apples. Now, I can also ask regarding it something like this. In this case, I want to know who eats orange. If I run this query, the result, one of the results, is Fred. Prolog is telling me that if I put Fred in the place of the variable, I'm going to get a statement that is true. If I press next, Another value that makes this expression true is Mike. So Mike eat orange. And if I press next again, another value that could make this expression true is Jane. So basically the answer to my question, who eat orange is Fred, Mike, and Jane. Those three, have a relationship with orange, and that relationship is it. In a similar way, I can use age, and I can ask with a variable, who is 
32 or who has the age 32 and when I run this query the answer is going to be Fred and also it's going to be Jane so both Fred and Jane have as an age 32 I can remove the variable and put here uh, Mike and here my question is Mike is 32 if I run it my answer is false I can ask age Mike and instead of a number I can put here a variable and my answer is going to be the value for that variable that make the statement true and that is 20 so the age of Mike is 20 moreover I can use variables for both objects like here h and w comma x both uppercases and if I run this query well the first value is I can use w equal Fred and x equal 32 and that is true or I can use w equal Jane and x equal 22 and x equal 32 and that is true or Mike or w equal Mike and x equal 20 and that is true so basically if I use variables for both objects what I get is a list with all the relationships that I define in the database so those are the key ideas in Prolog at this point I recommend you to install the interpreter or go online and use this one read the textbook section 1 to section 5 in chapter 5 and start practicing after that you can go and solve the question in the homework and then your quiz see you later